Hi everybody, it's MaggieBot, making vlogs, yay! Um, this is take probably nine or so, actually I can count, this is take six. Um, I just keep saying dumb stuff and doing dumb stuff, and most of the time I let those through, but I've been saying some really dumb stuff, so <laughs> it's time for take six! Um, when I started this, there was light in this room. Yeah, it's looking a little funky now with the side light, it's nice of shadows. Um, so, yeah, hi! Um, I woke up yesterday and for the first time in, oh boy, this was a long one, three, three weeks or so, I started feeling kind of like myself again. So uh, depression kind of lifted, took a deep breath, had a really good shower. Um, <laughs> you know how that goes. Uh, I bleached my roots out and stuff. Like Self-care, you know, a thing. Um, so when my depression lifted, I was like, wow, I really want to make some content right now. And unfortunately, just this weekend coming up, which I'll talk more about, is too busy to do anything to produce, but I will be doing more videos soon. Um, I need another vlogist when I don't really need another vlogist, but I need something similar. I need to do more, more stuff because I like chatting and I like keeping you guys up to date and I like thinking about games in a way that I don't get to do that often, that I do more in vlogging than I do in real life. <laughs> Because it's not so often that you just chat with yourself for an hour and a half on a camera, is it? Well, for me, it's sometimes kind of often. <laughs> um, so, anyway, like I said, this is just a rambling vlog. Uh, there's going to be game stuff and life stuff and all, all of it intermixed. Uh, so last night I got to go to a book launch for Martin McClellan, California at 4 o'clock. Um, this was hella fun. Uh, he goes by Hellbox on Twitter. He's a board gamer. He also is an author, a published author. Look at this thing. It's a book. Um, and he did a little reading. And more so than most art projects or art book things that I have attended, this was so fun and warm and inclusive. Um, I didn't feel out of place. I didn't feel left out. I felt like a part of the thing as a whole, which is very unique for me. And I kind of poked him, letting him know I would be there on Twitter before I got there because I get nervous about social situations. And he was very accommodating and he made sure to come over and say hello. And I really appreciate that. So if you're watching it all, thank you, Martin. This is really sweet of you. Um, and he signed my book and everything. I haven't read it yet because I don't like to read it until I'm ready to read the book. But it's it's right there. I see it. Um, I... Um, so, yeah, I went to this, and I then I went dancing and drinking, and I saw my friend David food in for a while, and that was really fun. Um, Brian's getting back into town in a couple hours, and we need to pick him up, and we're going to go out and probably have some martinis and talk about his trip, because he got to go down to San Francisco and um, do a talk a bunch of, in front of a bunch of people, and he met up with Tularean Community College, which is pretty cool, and they apparently did some streaming or something, and I didn't see it, so i got to find that later. Um, if you don't know, Brian is Mythic MTG Tech here on YouTube. He's a big YouTube star for magic. <laughs> he just hit 9,000 subscribers. He's a big YouTube thing. Um, but he does really cool in-depth in look at magic, and he has a really, really interesting way of looking at strategies, and he has a, a gift for explaining why you should be doing something. <laughs> Like, if, if you're like, why do I have this card in the deck? He he can tell you why that card should or shouldn't be there. Um, he has made me a much better Magic player just playing against him and asking him why he's doing something or asking him how I should have played something. And it's not... That maybe sounds bad. He doesn't talk down to me or anything, but it's, it's really... Magic is a game where you never played your best. It's it's like chess. You you can always make a better play. There's always something you didn't consider and there's always a threat that you have to evaluate whether or not it's actually needing to be dealt with at the moment or if you have a different place to put your energy. And having other people to bounce that off of is incredibly important. Um, so yay to Mythic MTG, MTG Tech and his 9,000 subscribers this week. Yay, yay, yay. Um, see, this weekend is Geek Girl Con, so um, as you may have heard, uh, Geek Girl Con is happening here in Seattle. It's two days, it's Saturday, Sunday. I will be there running the game floor, and uh, on Friday night we'll have a kickoff party at the Hard Rock, which should be a heck of a lot of fun. Um, so I will be doing that, and if you are in Seattle and you got Geek Girl Con tickets and you see me, say hello! 
I'll be there the whole time, forever. I think uh, tomorrow I will be looking at the list of panels to go to. Um, I can probably sneak off the floor for a panel here or there. Um, but that's one thing I've always found at Geek Girl Con is that the panels are often very interesting. Um, that's not always true of all panels everywhere, but in that case, I've had a really good time at the ones at Geek Girl Con, so I may try and sneak into a few of those. Oh, what else? <laughs> so many things, you guys. So many things. Oh, the at, at the con, so it's the first time that Card Kingdom gets to use, or not the first time, I guess it's not technically the first time. This is the first big con that Card Kingdom is going to be doing a mobile game library for. So, um, Aaron Donna is going to card in games, and there's like, I think, 70 to 90 games or so. It's about a thousand bucks worth of stuff, or two thousand dollars worth of stuff. Um, and he's going to be on hand helping us as a volunteer to uh, loan out the games and teach the games and make sure people are enjoying them. And Aaron and I and Chris that works with me got to make kind of a wish list of um, what games we would want to include. And I, I mean, it's it's all the big ones, all of them. And you know, it was it was amazing what they let us do at work. So uh, we built this mobile game library so now people can like um, kind of borrow a library for events. Um, we've taken it now to a community college, I think. Uh, we'll be going to OrcaCon with it, and this will be Geek Girl Con this weekend. So it's a really cool idea, I think, and it's a great way to get some exposure for our company and some great resource for Geek Girl Con. So it's kind of a mix of, of my two jobs. <laughs> Geek Girl Con is a volunteer thing, but it's still kind of a job. Um, so that's really neat. Uh, the last thing before I even start talking about games, it's going to be a long one. The last take was 23 minutes before I completely screwed it up. Uh, so the Board Game League, the Pacific Northwest Board Game League, I think it's called. Uh, so if you are in the greater Seattle area and you would like to kind of compete for funsies uh, with a bunch of other people playing a couple games, uh, the Pacific Northwest Board Game League is starting on October 15th. Uh, if you search for that phrase on Facebook, you can find the Facebook group. There are like seven or eight different stores, and you go to the store on their league night, and you can meet up with other people, and the stores have demo copies of the games. The first season is St. Petersburg and Le Grand Hall, both of which I've played a heck of a lot of, so I'm very excited. Um, and the one thing that I really like about what the league will do, because I'm not one for the ranking type tournament style stuff, but what I like that it'll do is it'll encourage replays of games because there's nothing worse than being bad at every game you play because all you play are first plays. Um, it's so much more fun to play a game the tenth time for a really good game. The tenth time is so much better than the first time. Um, and maybe that's not true as far as the wow factor. You're never going to be in awe of a game after ten plays, but maybe you will. But um, I, I always enjoy being good at a game. If I can if I can take a game out and know that I have a shot at winning no matter who's playing against me, I feel much better. Um, St. Petersburg, I tend to forget where the points come from and buy other things, but uh, I'm excited because the league is allowing for the market to be used, which is one of the expansions that came in the new version. So Z-Man redid it, and they did this market thing, and it's like another, a whole other phase. And um, it Fs with every strategy you use with the base game, so it's really hard to evaluate what's good anymore with the market involved. Um, nobles are still good, but you have to play in the market, otherwise you probably won't win. It's interesting. Um, and La Granja, of course, I've been playing that quite a bit of, of late, no no less, I played it the other night. Um, and it's still very fun. Um, I've still never seen a broken strategy come out. It's just a really solid game all around. Um, I'd still mo most likely play a Feld over La Granja, but I, I like it. It's good, it's just not Feld for me. Uh, so, um, my next challenge, my you know, I give myself little personal challenges because that's how I motivate myself. I don't know. Um, I asked a while back uh, for vlog topics, uh, thinking I would be doing more shooting, and then all the bad brains happened. Um, so a bunch of people were asking me to do videos, and I'm still going to do a lot of those. Um, and one person in particular was asking for video topics 
And I kept having to shoot him down. I kind of started feeling bad because he's been a friend of mine on Twitter for a really long time. And he kept asking about like hostage negotiator and all secret games and a couple other things. And I kept saying, you know, I haven't played it. I haven't played it. I don't know it. I don't know it well enough to, to talk about. And so what I ended up doing is buying one of those games so that I can learn it and talk about it. So Onarim, I played once. Um, then the first edition, when it was just a little card game, and I bought this one, and I don't you know, do a lot of solo gaming, but I hope to have fun and play this game. I hope I can set it up, what would be ideal for me, and this might sound stupid, what would be ideal is if I can set it up on my computer desk in front of my computer and watch Netflix while I play it, because it's a solo game. And I think some people like theme and stuff, so they don't do that, but it seems like a fun thing to me. Um, but it is really pretty. They did a really good job, and the cards are gorgeous. I've seen them before. Um, I'll try and post up some pictures, and then hopefully I will have some opinions on it later. That's my goal. Um, for Essen stuff, I poked my head in. I watched day one of the the Essen live coverage. Um, I don't. I haven't watched any of day two yet, or I guess it was day zero, and then today is day one. But um. I will be watching those next week during my work week um, because I obviously have Geek Girl Con all weekend this weekend. Um, it was very, very fun to watch day one, though. Um, it ended with a Friedman Freeze uh, and his puppet that looks like him. It was adorable. Uh, I only have uh, three games for certain coming my way so far from Essen, and that's uh, Domus Domini. Uh, Food Chain Magnet, and Ponzi Scheme. So, uh, Food Chain Magnet is the next blotter, and um, myself and probably eight people I know are purchasing this game, uh, just in the Seattle gaming group that I belong to. Uh, there's a lot of splatter fans out here, and the, those games are always so fun and so cool, and the retro art style makes it so worth it for me. Um, I, I have plenty of plans for lots of Essen titles once they come to the States to purchase them or at least try them. But uh, for stuff that's import only, I was very careful this year. So three games only so far. I'll probably pick up Burano. Burano. I don't know how to say that name. Um, for Domus Domini, that's the same designer as Planet Steam. And it's really been his only other game. And I'm very interested to see what he's got up his sleeve because it's been so long. Um, Planet Steam is very interesting. Um, I played it and really liked it. It was good, not great. And I think it just needed some polish. And unfortunately, I think with Fantasy Flight getting the license, they're not really big on cleaning up a game. They're, they're very good at publishing. Very good at publishing, but I think they lack development skills. Um, I know they use kind of a design house for most of their in-house stuff, and those always feel a lot more developed than games that they sign from other designers. And I know that Planet Steam, I think, was a even a re reprint, but um, I am very interested to see what this guy's got up his sleeve. Um, another point on that, I had no idea that Planet Steam was based off of a video game until the Mule board game got leaked. Found out about the Mule board game downloaded the Mule app on my tablet to see what the fuss was about, and now I get the comparison to to Planet Steam. I, I, I totally can see it. Um, I think the app is a little frustrating with how random it is, like all the bad events and stuff, um, and I don't like the dexterity element of the bidding. It's funky to me. I would want to play that against humans, I think, instead of AI. Um, but I'm looking forward to the Mule board game, and I'm also very much looking forward to Domus Domini. Domini. Um, that's, uh, I can't even say his name. I hope he starts becoming popular so other people can teach me how to pronounce it. It is Heinz George, I believe. And then it's probably Tiemann, because it's T-H-I-E-M-A-N-N. -N, and that's, that's what I'm going with for now. <laughs> Um, and so Food Chain Magnet and Domus Domini and um, Ponzi Scheme, which I know a little less about. I saw Nicholas Co. post about it and post about the game, and I saw a little mini video, but it looked very interesting. And then Nicholas contacted me that they might have some room in 
their luggage for a game for me, which is the sweetest thing ever. And I am really appreciative that I have such awesome people in my life. Um, so uh, Ponzi scheme is winging its way back to New York and probably going to meet me at Board Game Geek Con. And um, Domus Domini is actually being picked up by my friend Andrew, who is one of the only humans, I think, in the world to have my job. Um, so it's interesting to talk to someone else that does ordering for board game store almost full time. Um, as far as I know, he Andrew's full time doing that, but I know I'm not positive. Uh, we have little chats about about stuff because it's it's weird. Um, so I'm excited about those games. Burana also looks very interesting, but we have a little uh, game meetup thing that a woman out here runs called Sasquatch, um, where I will have the opportunity to play almost any S and title I would like because she sends someone there and picks up a billion D games and brings them back in their suitcases. And so during the week of Halloween, I'll be doing Sasquatch and also receiving a heck of a lot of product at work. So I will be doing product at work and then heading to Sasquatch. Uh, very excited about that. Um, it's a lot of games. It's five days. It's a lot of friends that I don't get to see that often. It's a lot of people period. I don't get to see that often. And um, I, I look forward to it. I, I did it last year for my first time and it was so much fun. And I only got to attend like two days, but it was worth it. Like, you know, it's the amount of money you donate to to make those happen is not that much. Um, it's totally worth it. It's more than a badge to a con, but you're paying for something special. And it's very unique and very cool. So it's interesting to me. Um, yeah, so games. To talk about Steamworks in this take, I have zero idea if I talked about it. Uh, I don't think I have. <laughs> like I said, this is a, my millionth take. Uh, so Steamworks uh, was another one that I was really interested in trying again, and I picked it up the day it came out and cracked it and played it. And um, so this is my update because I talked a little bit about Steamworks the first time I played it. Um, I had kind of maybe not complained is the word, maybe complained is the word about how long the game took and how much neck craning there was trying to see everything on the table. Um, I said that that just doesn't work and I would never play it five players again. I would only play it at three. And when I posted that to Board Game Geek, the designer, Alex Churchill, actually said that what they kind of baked into the game was a little bit of that busking attitude. Like, hey, I see you could use an automaton. I have an automaton that also gives you $3. And like, you're trying to push your machines. You want people to use them. So their intention with the game was to get that kind of um, attitude happening. Um, the, the biggest downside I have to Steamworks, period, is the rulebook. And if they had written that into the rulebook, maybe that would have made it clearer to me in my first play that that was appropriate. Um, I have tons of issues with that rulebook, but I do like the game quite a bit. And it was a lot of fun even the second time I played it. Um, we've been playing with different different powers each time, and I will say that some feel better than others. I had one that was kind of lame compared to my last one. I played the electricity girl the first time, and she had to build a tile engine. It was very unique and cool, and I played one last time that it was just he had a two or a three build when most people only have a two build, and that was kind of his thing. Uh, so, not my favorite. Eh, it happens. Um, yeah, so it was great getting to finish a game of it, getting to score it, see the whole third era of cards, which are really bonkers. Um, I quite enjoyed it. The game did not last that long. It was, it was two hours, but it was a three-player game. And when I started my explanation of the rules, I started with, and you're going to have to sell your machines because other people using your machines and you using other people's machines also speeds along the game. You That is your timer for the whole thing. So if no one's using anyone else's machines, it's actually going to take forever. You have to run out of tiles. So um, really quite good. I liked it a lot. I have not played Gold West. I haven't even picked it up. I like... <laughs> I don't know what it is about that game. It just doesn't interest me. But people keep saying that it's so fabulous, so I'm going to just, you know, grab it at the library sometime or have a friend bring it and teach it to me. If it's so fabulous, I will play it. I just, I don't know why. It just didn't, it didn't do it for me. It's just, I'm not usually a theme person, but that one just, gold, gold, anything Western. I'm just out. Is that bad? 
I wonder if I do like anything Western. I don't think I do. Um, I like Western movies. <laughs> That's about it. Um, anything else? Uh, probably. There's tons, actually. But I will leave it here for now. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye! Oh, also, wait. Before you go, if you'd like, um, I'm going to do a Q&A vlog next. If you'd like any questions asked, uh, either hit me up on Twitter or Facebook with an Ask Maggie tag or in the comments below. And I will say stuff and answer questions. Or they can just be comments like normal and we'll chat. So, yeah, bye!